Hello, good morning, and welcome to Why Details. <laughs> Daytona Draper, Audi R8 V10, Spider. Uh, first time the car's been here, new customer to white details. And it's booked for a four day booking, a two stage minor paint correction, wheel treatments, hood treatments, multi layer paint protection, engine bay, and the full interior. So I'll, I'll hopefully do some more interior footage uh, when we get round to that, because I appreciate there's not been a great deal of footage of that. So it's received so far the full safe wash and two part chemical decontamination. We're now moving on to the third and final, which is in the form of the clay bar. So in here, we have two boiling hot sections of clay. You can see how ne nice and easy and malleable it is to work with. So you roll this out into a nice disc. Uh, and it's just the weight of the clay bar. Now what this is doing, if it's new to you, if you've never seen the clay bar before, the two part chemical decontamination is removing fallout and tar deposits from the bodywork. So the clay bar will lift fallout and tar deposits from the vehicle, but you're only otherwise then picking tar up between the clay and the paint, and it's a tar deposit, it's quite a hardy. You'd much better get the tar off first, and then going onto the clay bar, knowing that there's no sediments, there's no pieces left on the vehicle that are likely to pick up in the clay and scratch. All we're now removing from the paint and the clay, if it feels a bit bobbly, if it feels a bit rough, it's just really bonded hard, contaminants left in the paint, various fallout or organic, organic matter. The clay in question, you may have seen this before, is AM clay, AM details. Only lubrication we require is water. So we've got no expensive lubrications or, or products to buy, just water to help lubricate the panel. Yeah. I've actually got two pieces of clay in the bucket. So whilst I'm working with one, there's one already in the bucket, nice and warm and soft. And when this one gets uh, too dirty, I can change around. So formed into a nice soft disc. It's just the weight of the clay bar in your hand. Now on a lighter color car, it's visual. You can see sometimes as a visual indicator what you're pulling off the paint, but the darker the color, the, the more difficult it is to spot. So sometimes we rely on touch and sometimes we're relying on sound. If it's really quite bad, you can hear it pulling the contamination away from the paint. There wasn't a great deal of tar. There wasn't a great deal of fallout. I'm not expecting there to be a great deal of pickup on the clay. The vehicle is a nice clean example and it's garaged. It is very much then limited to the exposure to the elements, thus keeping the contamination minimal. And spoiler. A vehicle this size, in this condition, it's gonna be probably gonna take me 15, 20 minutes to get round. All surfaces, the glass included, before it's blown dry to eliminate trapped water. And then we're going across onto the ramp behind us, get the wheels off, get them outside for the cleanse, and then start to inspect the paintwork for portion. I like to I 
The car is now sat waiting on paint inspection, but I'll nip outside and uh, get the wheels cleansed and decontaminated before they're sat to one side uh, waiting for their protection later in the week. Uh, but those that are new to the channel, those that have seen this channel before, will remember that before I start the polishing process, I just give the vehicle one or two lengths in the car park on the brakes gently to dry the discs off. Now, if we didn't dry the discs off, uh, obviously the, the rust sets in, the rust, the corrosion starts to set place. Uh, and over the length of the week, the disc would get thicker and drier with rust, uh, which would lift the first time the vehicle is on the brakes, but that only potentially contaminates the pads for a short period. But of course, that rust has to go somewhere. I learned from a mistake about four or five years ago on an R8 Spider, actually, an Ibis white body with the gloss black wheels. Now, the customer was quite local to my old, old premises. I was following them back to their place. The garage is immaculate, marble floor, big yellow snap-on toolbox, yellow, chopper rally chopper sat on the side uh, a cool little photo opportunity and followed the car back i hadn't done the brake disc trick now the gloss black wheels by the time we got a mile and a half two miles down the road the gloss wheels were orange it was really quite embarrassing so i had to then sort of nip back grab some kit sort the wheels uh, on site so Neil, if you're watching this, apologies. Uh, that doesn't happen anymore. You learn from your mistakes. Very much a recommended procedure if space and time allows. So outside for the wheels now, I'll then look over the paintwork before we start the paint polishing. Someone's been spending some money for once. This is the first of two awesome deliveries I'm expecting this week. More on this later. I'd like to love you. Love you. I'd like to love you. Love you. I'd like to love you night and day if I may, may, may. If you were wondering. Yes, I spent some time in the sun. I did cream up as well, but hence the pink. Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Have spoke about them before. Scan grip, sun match. Second generation. If you're gonna buy it, you may as well buy it a lot. Pen torch. <laughs> Head torch. Multi match two. D match two. Love it. Tripod with casters. And a tripod without casters. Oh yeah, this has got a sensor. On, off, on, off. Yeah, so it is advised before prolonged use that the chargeables are charged. So that is what I'll do. Unboxed and on charge, we have the scan grip range. Uh, starting with the match pen, nice convenient pocket sized pen to slip in your side pocket in the car. Hook on your apron. Ranging from with it, you can change the diameter so you've got 10 degrees to 70 degrees. 
Uh, it's a 4000 Kelvin colour temperature with a 100 lumen brightness. Next is the eye match, we have the head touch. This being the first to have the two independent uh, Kelvin outputs. So with the first press we are on 80 lumens up to 160 lumens, the brightness scale. Press and hold from 6500 Kelvin to 4500 Kelvin, much warmer output and again 80, 160, different brightnesses. It'll be nice and handy this for uh, engine bays and interiors I'd imagine, plus it's rechargeable so no batteries. Next in the range then is their Sunmatch, this is the Sunmatch 2, um, the Sunmatch original. So much one just had a 4500 Kelvin output, similar to the iMatch, the head touch. If you look in the center, this is to provide 4500 and 6500 Kelvin outputs once again. So we need to work on different colors. The cooler light working better for darker colors, and the warmer light, the 4500 Kelvin, working better for lighter colors. If you took a Titan Silver BMW or an Ibis White Audi or a Candy White VW, using the 4500, 65. Using the 6500 on Ibis White, it's bloody bright, not recommended. Using the 6500 on Ibis White on lighter colors tends to disguise and mute the light. You don't really get a chance to fully see uh, get the benefit from the temperature and the light output. If you press and hold from 65 to 45, it's a much warmer, Temperature, warm, cold, cold, warm. The warmer temperature working more for the lighter colors, as I say, and the colder color for the darker colors. So in the off mode, the first press delivers 250 lumens, second press, brighter, 500 lumens. We have a magnet on the base, which could be handy to position on the bottom of the scissor lift or any areas of toolboxes. And also the hook, potentially, Again, maybe interiors or on the underside of a bonnet for an engine bay. Sun Match 2. Moving up to the Multi Match 2 then. The first of their floodlight range. The main beauty of this is the fact it can operate on battery power. So once she's fully charged up, we have a battery scale. Uh, obviously the brighter we go, if we're on 10%, we're at 250 lumens, 100%, 2,500 lumens. You can change this. So currently we're on the bottom output. 250 lumens as we start to increase you will see the battery average currently five hours at 25 percent 50 percent 70 percent an hour obviously this is yet to be fully charged and it is recommended to charge before prolonged use working to their 6500 and 4500 kelvin range so we have the best of both worlds can be used plugged in plugged into the mains but half the beauty of this it can literally go wherever you want it to then the Multimatch is Bigger Brother. The main difference between the D-Match 2 and the Multimatch 2, this has a slightly bigger fascia, but this isn't rechargeable. This is solely mains operated, and the Multimatch 2 is 2,500 lumens, and this beast is 5,000, so one of the brightest lights available on the market. Dimmable from 500 lumens to 5,000. Again, nice, robust, sturdy design. Dust and waterproofed IP67. So this thing I think I will have on the tripod with the casters, so it's nice, easy to maneuver around the vehicles. And then the multi-match, likely to put onto the fixed tripod, because the beauty of this, it is mobile. You can take it, charge it, plug it in, off you go. So far, very impressed. Back on the old do-it-yourself torch for the time being, we have some paint inspection to make. Obviously I want to use these, but I've been advised they need a full charge before they're usable, so we're using this for the time being. Daytona Grey Pearl R8, and it's but, who's this? Christ. Excuse me one second. Vehicles booked for a two-stage minor paint correction detail. One of the most popular services that's offered here. I think potentially when the vehicle came in for a quotation, we've got some more obvious marks on the rear deck there. Obviously it's a forgiving color. And under this lamp, 
I'm actually now having played this gang grip stuff, struggling to spot stuff, but that's a combination of the color. There you can see more of the haze shining through, but of course in the light clusters, it's a darker pattern and it's easier to make out these defects. But a major correction, the vehicle's usage, obviously a major correction with chasing paint perfection where it's safe to do so, but after a minor correction, which is a two stage, we're not chasing perfection, we're looking for a cutting pass and a refining pass. It's a vast improvement. And we're looking at between 70 and 80% defects removal. From four foot, five foot, the finish after a minor correction is going to be the same after a major correction. So you really have to want to chase paint perfection to push the multi-stage machine polish chasing paint perfection. Front bumper, we just discovered some sander marks. This looks like it's been painted. But the bottom half of the bumper there, extremely flat. Flatter marks left behind. Four days, minor paint correction, wheel and caliper, exhaust protection, fabric hood protection, engine bays yet to be dressed, with interior, nice car, and it'll be a nice, steady week. <laughs> This isn't my car, this is a Vauxhall Combo. I've been lent this on short term because I discovered on Friday morning uh, a five inch crack in the windscreen of the BM. Now this is ironic because on the Thursday morning whilst waiting for a customer, I actually spent an hour prepping the old glass, ready for a new durability test with glass sealants and glass coatings. They got all sorted, got all nicely prepped uh, and applied. Uh, and now either Thursday night or Friday morning, massive great crack and it's been replaced by Gavin from Autoglass today. Day. Uh, today, rear deck, offside rear quarter, rear bumper, yet to do the gloss black, the light clusters, the rear deck, the spoiler, this deck, the vent, light cluster, near side rear wing, and this portion. I suppose it's not bad progress. Uh, and we're now tackling down the near side. Well, there's a the lamp. Magnetic. Oh, Christ. So this currently is set to the 6500 temperature. 
Looking in the lower portions, the haze, we can see there the movement. And as we go up onto the wing, this has been cut. So it's a two-stage minor correction. No more movement, no more swirls, marring. There may be the odd deeper scratch rounded off in places. That's where the major paint correction comes in. But the aim of this job is to eliminate this movement, restore the gloss, and lay down some quality protection. Sometimes easier to polish in the dark. You can see it may be more obvious now. The defects might be showing better on camera. Now the bid lights are off, so working under the forced lighting is sometimes better than having lots of light pouring in. One of the reasons why, one of the main reasons why, there are no window lights, there are no skylights, there are no windows, there is no natural light, which is a bit of a bummer at times. At the same time, if you've got natural light pouring in, similar story to turning the bid lights off just then, you're only otherwise potentially muting the finish and blocking the ability to see what you want to see because if you've got lots of natural light pouring in with reflections you're limited as to what you can see so there we go this little thing comes into its own at this point the magnetic base allows me to we can find it where we want it stick it on the scissor lift leave it there and lit up and I've now got the perfect positioning for the light. Mid-morning on day three and the Audi sits looking well. The majority of the cutting is now complete. This is the D-Max 2, the Scandrip Beast of a Light, 5,000 lumens. Currently, she's set to, pause some focus, 50%. Let's crank it up to 5,000. And now I shot the looking like this myself, but reflecting in the car now, it really is a powerful source. So the rear deck, the bumper, the side skirts, and the both, both of the sides have been cut, waiting on refinement. Daytona Grey Pearl. Cracking colour. It's a real nice forgiven colour. But as we look up onto the corner of the bonnet, just below the V10 badge here on the offside, here we're seeing clusters of unfinished DA sanding marks. So this, the bonnet and the bumper have seen some paintwork. And then at the top in the corner there in the bottom channel, again, unfinished sander marks which need chasing out. So on to the bonnet now, get that cut, get the front bumper cut, the blades, the rear gloss black section on the back end before we start the refining process and lay down some protection. The eye match, I thought actually at first, looked a bit of a bugger, but I thought this is more of a gimmick and probably more useful for the interiors. More useful for the interiors and 
engine bays, but for the panels where you're actually looking over the top, it's really useful. It's quite a difficult color to pinpoint defects, but the, the, the accuracy, your head placement, obviously is following track with your eyes. So it's really easy just to readjust and navigate. The wireless swipe on off can be a bit frustrating. It's caught me a couple of times. So if you actually just use the power button on two, definitely come back to using this for the flat panels uh, just interested to see if we can do the same thing down the sides it's got a slight angle to it it's got probably a 20 degree angle facing down uh, but no cool really impressed onto the bumper for the cutting the final section on the Audi to cut the sender marks we saw I think very early on into the video unfinished sender marks where the DA is stopped uh, and it hasn't been polished back so Simple, straightforward, nice, easy cutting set. We'll lift this and bring back the clarity and the gloss. Five minutes later, in the same area, we have a much sharper, nicer, truer, better clarity finish. Yes, okay, it's in the very lower quarters of the vehicle, uh, and unless you've got the light source on the curb side, you're never going to see this. But of course, when the vehicle's at this height, it's easy to see these areas, and that only otherwise be probably missed. So starting the interior uh, process quickly, I have blown these sides of the leather seats to remove all the sand, sort of dirt and the, the crumbs down that collect in the leather sections there. This side, the offside driver side, has had a very quick brief hoover, the first of two stages. It will be blown under the seat rails now, under the seats, areas that down the sides of the seat channel there the, on the center console, places you can't get to the hoover, the air will blow it out. So it has a first initial rough hoover, and then a finesse hoover, if you will, to pick up the secondary bits. The reason I don't do the airline first is because if it's a particularly dirty interior, it only otherwise blow in a lot of dirt in lots of other places. So at least if you pick up the majority, 90% of the dirt or the, the crumbs and the bits in the first place, you can then pick out what you need to after you've done the airline trick. Passing the side, receiving the first initial vac. So you can see that's pretty much good to go. You'd scrub it, you'd give it a shampoo. Ah, uh, but all the bits have been sucked up. But now if we slide this chair forward, get the airline under there. And all of a sudden you've discovered a whole load more dirt 
that you would have otherwise struggled to have got, or you would never have gotten Hoover without using the blower to free the dirt from under the rails. A few of you may remember from the Ibis White R8, I did it as the white detail uh, for Christmas sometime. This, same as that one, it's a manual and the nice open gear gator. Inside of here, basically, it's a little dusty and you can't really get your finger in, you can't really get a, a brush in as such. But what we can do is pre-soak uh, this little medical swab with some I2 Triclean, which is what we've been using on the rest of the interior, the console and the dash. Pre-soak that on there. And this gives you the flexibility of getting into all the crevices, uh, all the dust that's well out of reach otherwise uh, with the microfiber and your finger. Shift that over. Jobs like this are kind of therapeutic and hopefully don't go unnoticed. Well, it won't now because it's on camera. So what I'll do now is take the stick from another one and wrap it inside the microfiber just to help sort of dry off these channels, which again are out of reach. Looking much better. In the vents, the bottom, you can see the tide mark where it's been wiped with a cloth previously, but not able to get inside. So again, the use of the foam swab eliminates all that and then you can take five minutes and do the individual slats. We have a before and after. Leather care, so we've de-dusted these already with a brush attachment on the hoover. I've used the airline to flush out the crumbs and the crack down the sides of the bolsters with a soft bristle brush. And it's time now for the cleanse. If you've been here before, you will know I already used the Dr. Leather wipes. Links to these and the medical phone swabs used for the vents can be found in the description of the video down below. So leather wipes, I like the convenience, I like the ease of use. These are safe, these are neutral, and they're effective. The tub I use, 150 wipes, but you can buy smaller tubs of 40 wipes. So if you're a home user and you just want to stick them in the glove box, perfect. Setting the leather into areas. So on this base, I will use three different wipes. One, two, and the two bolsters for the third. Get into the bottom of the crease there. It's always advised to use gloves. With the wipes used, these are dead wipes now ready for the bin, the leather is given a wipe over with a clean, wet, not dripping, but damp, clean, designated, for this purpose only, microfiber. This draws away all the residues and allows the seats to dry as one before we take a new wipe and do the back. That's the top section clean. So again, damp, clean microfiber, just to wipe where we've been and pick up any residues that have been left behind. I suppose it's worth noting that like many other things in the detailing game, in the trade, that this scene is my way and my preference uh, and I'm sure there's a million and one other ways to clean leather. But for me, this is the process. Not a terribly dirty interior, that said to convertibles was obviously exposed with the roof down more often to dust and dirt uh, and fall out from trees or whatnot so these are the used cloths and against a brand new cloth you can see the dirt that's been poured and the color difference not terrible uh, the bulk of the dirt is held in the towel but this is the rinse water from my wipe over microfiber so this dirt seen here has been rinsed off this so otherwise that, that's been pulled off the seat. So if we just left it after the wipes, 
all this dirt that's seen in the bucket that would have been left on the seat. So this has just picked up the remaining residue and the dirt for them now to dry naturally. But this is now good uh, and ready for leather protection. Same applies for the leather steering wheel. Concentrating on the 10 to 2 positions where 32,000 miles worth of dirty hands, potentially dirty hands, have rested. With the leather now dry, naturally dry itself, it's looking fresh, it's looking good, it's looking matte. The whole place may need a very final, third and final hoover to pick up a few bits later on, but leather protection in the form of L1 Leather Guard, g Leather Guard, and this is the antibacterial protection also. Always want to give it a bit of a shake. I tend not to spray direct onto areas for fear of potential overspray onto plastics in the center console, which you may miss and it'll just leave a little. So I'll spray onto uh, my five applicator uh, and apply. Want to give it a nice, thin, even coverage. Trying to get into all the cracks and the crevices all over the bolsters. Plenty of overlapping, ensuring you get a nice, consistent cover. Uh, for best results, you want to apply two coats 24 hours apart, so it's a case of time is 10 past 6, uh, and if I can get another coat on tomorrow, that would be ideal before collection on Saturday. And allowing it to dry to a haze, a bit remembering to give it a final buff with a clean microfiber, a dry clean microfiber, just to remove any sort of smearing or hazing, not hazing, excess that may be left behind. g and the L1 Leather Guard. Because the R8 has various carbon fiber sections on the interior, as well as these sort of shiny uh, areas around the dash, more carbon fiber. These areas with the damp microfiber, as seen earlier, will pick up smears, of course. So this now needs a light once over. And for this, I'm using a very small cut down section of microfiber very very lightly applying auto finesse triple allowing it to haze before buffing to a nice shine So I think with the exception of the interior glass and the sat nav screen and the dials, uh, that's the interior done. Looking smart, obviously only a two seater, so easy to tackle, easy enough to tackle, easier to tackle. But everything's nice, everything's sorted, nice matte steering wheel once again. Uh, and I'm now going to quickly polish the shelf here where the roof comes over and latches, seal the fabric roof and allow that to dry overnight and then back in tomorrow for multi layer paint protection as well as the exterior glass repellent, final wipe over and she's ready for collection.
Audi R8 V10 Spider complete. I have to say it's been quite an interesting week. What with the new setup and the light, I was only going to buy the Sun Max, the handheld. This itself is very useful, very handy. It's lighter than the do-it-yourself torch that I created and spoke about previously. Looking forward to. I've yet to really explore the two, the two-tone 4500, 6500 color match scenario. The 65 seemed to work best on the Daytona Gray, but the lights of my three series, I should really bring that inside and show you the difference between the 45 and the 65. The 45 being the warmer color which would be more beneficial on that shade of car. So starting with the, the match pen, it's there for the convenience, you can stick it in your tool bag, you can stick it in your car, so if you're mobile, you've got a quote to do on the road or a dealership, this is sort of handy and convenient. But when you have the, the Sun Match, this is what I'd reach for most on the most part. The magnetic base has been very useful, and it's helped to highlight sort of the defects on the lower part of the sill, the side skirts. Charge time is, about sort of four hours, I think three and a half, four hours, I believe. And it has the handy little battery illuminator here, so when it's in the dock, you can see where we're at. Uh, and operation time, I've not really, it's obviously not in use all of the time, all day, uh, but <clears throat> at the end of each day, it's just easy to drop in the cradle and it's on charge, fully charged, ready for the next day. So the Multimatch 2, this is the first of the two flood lamps. Again, 4500, 6500 difference in the temperature. Operating from 250 lumens up to 2500. The beauty of this, it's the one on the floor behind me. I think, I think you saw this underneath the car earlier on. So I was doing the rear diffuser, the gloss black diffuser under there. I just stuck that on the floor. There's no cable, it's portable, it's battery powered. I guess the Multimatch 2 is the more common out of the D-Match and the Multimatch with the flexibility and sort of the, port, the mobility side of things. So you can take it anywhere. On top of the Multimatch, we have the D-Match. The main difference between the Multimatch and the D-Match is the output. This is the brighter one of the two. So the Multimatch is a 2,500 lumen maximum output. This is a 5,000 lumen maximum output. One thing I wasn't gonna be too sure on uh, at first was the I-Match. So this is the, obviously, head torch you've seen. It too has the 45 and 6,500 Kelvin temperature. And then the step one and step two. So we have the two brightnesses, step one, step two. If you're over the top of a bonnet, you've always got a true line of sight of correction, I suppose. And I was really impressed. So I used it on the interior and I used it on the engine bays and it's just nice to have that sort of light. The, the wireless, how do I do it? The wireless function on the in-car, you gotta be careful of. It did actually flicker a couple of times if you're passing the console, if, if it doesn't just operate on your hand. Uh, so I just left it on or off as opposed to using the wireless, but that has its own advantages at the same time. However, I'm here trying to test it and I'm thinking, why isn't that working? I've just discovered, this is the remote from a little sound dock. There's some sort of interference going on, and I probably shouldn't be wearing this. It'd be frying my head, but I press the button. Any, any press of the button is, anyway, let's not do that anymore. Comes up with the, the strap, it's got a nice foam, it's got a nice foam back in there. We'll get a bit sweaty, I'd imagine, over the time. And it has the adjustable strap, so you can make it comfy or slacker or whatever. Have I found any bad bits yet? I don't think I have, to be honest. It's very rugged, it's sturdy. The sun match has dropped a couple of times and the the only thing I might say is the, the D-Match and the Multi-Match are great and I like the portability of the smaller one, but I think a quick release system, I think a quick release would be handy at the minute. This one goes on the top of here, which is a beast of a tripod and it'll go three meters tall. For that to go on, it's unscrew uh, and screw it back in. I'm sure there could be a quick release system. So that's just straight through this hole straight into the top of the pole. Uh, you can have a T bracket, an arm to accommodate one, two lamps, uh, which may be something to look into in the future. If you are interested in checking out more on the Scandrick range, a tidy little package they do do is the Multimatch kit. So here you have the Multimatch 2, you have the Sun Match, you have the pen and the eye match head torch. So it sort of covers all boundaries. It might be that you already have a tripod, you can put the multi match onto that if you can get the right diameter thread. No regrets, really love the kit. What information I can find regards pricing and availability and where you can buy this stuff from, 
I will put down in the description to the video below. So if you're watching this on a tablet or a mobile device, there should be an arrow below this. And then if you're watching it on desktop, again, there's a small arrow. Open it up, you'll see all the hardware and everything else I use, as well as the information geared towards this uh, scan grip equipment. With that said, that's me done. The Audi is finished. The job spec for this, it was a two-stage minor paint correction, full interior, the fabric hood cleanse and protect. The wheels that came off the car, the wheels, the calipers and the exhausts have been treated with more to their paint protection courtesy of G-Technic Crystal Serum and EXO which creates CS Black G-Technic's flagship paint protection package with the glass uh, trim, leather, fabric protection, total surface protection and it looks well. I'll run around this now. You'll see some of the footage there. The customer's picking up in about 40, 45 minutes. The lighting scene, the lighting used for the after shots is all the new scan grip stuff, of course, with the exception of the spotlights in the ceiling, the panel lights in the ceiling, and the spotlights down the side. I'll also try to flip between 6500 and 4500 so you'll get the warmth and the cooler visual so you can see if it's going to work for you again it's going to be better on different colors so as the weeks go by i'll be using this in the coming months on the coming vlogs and i've got lots to look forward to in terms of what's in the diary i've got many many white details booked there so looking forward to them hope you've enjoyed this it was a bit different rather than do another full-on sort of car and talk about the processes in the detailing put a spin on it and talking about some of the kit. Perhaps it's something I can do more of. So I think that is everything covered. I uh, hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching. If you like the channel, please give the, the, the video a thumbs up on YouTube, subscribe to the channel if you've not already, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Probably better than sure and condition. It probably is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Funny.